trying to get details that they cannot get any other way. So there's a lot of science happening right now. You have been watching ABC News special coverage of the solar eclipse as it moves across the country. But as that eclipse moves closer to us here in New York, we wanted to focus more on the event as it heads right towards the capital region. News 10 ABC's solar eclipse coverage starts right now. News 10 ABC solar eclipse coverage is sponsored by Kings Isle Adult Living. Good afternoon and welcome to News 10 ABC solar eclipse coverage. I'm Lydia Colbita and I'm excited to share this event with you and John Gray and Chief. Yeah, this is, Steve a, this is an unbelievable day for so many people mm -hmm. and the weather. I mean, we're lucking out with I the know, weather here. I know. We, we have clouds, but at least we can see the uh, the sun dimly through the clouds at this point. It is on our side this time. Now, since 2017, this uh, year of the last solar eclipse in the country, the focus has been from uh, Texas to right here in upstate New York. And we really are lucky out because not only are we getting a cap, but we're getting the clear skies. Yeah. Can we uh, pop up the uh, satellite picture? Um, I did put the, this is the visible satellite uh, imagery, and it shows you that Western New York, unfortunately, Utica, Syracuse, points west, uh, they're just not going to have much. I mean, the clouds are pretty thick. We're on the edge of those thin clouds uh, approaching the capital region. Now, you notice how the clouds are getting less bright? The shadow is now impacting the satellite picture, but the uh, high clouds... Let's zoom in. You can see they're into the capital region. There are some thin spots. Lake Champlain up towards Plattsburgh and Burlington right now uh, by far have the best uh, skies. It's uh, just a few clouds, so that's where the, uh, the best uh, is located right now. But out to the west, talking to some folks out in Rochester, solid clouds west of Syracuse. It's just tough in western New York, better to the north and east of Albany. Back to you guys. Our coverage in the upper left, you're going to see our eclipse tracker. We're going to check in from time to time to see how that eclipse is progressing. Right now it is in Junction, Texas, and my family in Dallas just texted me saying how cool this was that they saw. Down they got there. to see it. Yeah, we've got a couple of crews right what we're calling the totality zone. They got the best seat. James Delafuente is up in uh, Lake Placid, uh, one of the prime positions in the Adirondacks. Also, meteorologist Matt Mackey. He is at Scroon Lake. That's actually the closest area of totality, if you want to call it, as part of the capital region. And we are, of course, keeping an eye on the Albany area. While we are not in the totality zone here, 97% of the sun will be blocked out in Albany as well as in Waterfleet, where my family is getting hot dogs right now at Gus's and the line <laughs> is around the block. So here is the U.S. path from Mexico. It enters Texas at Eagle Pass and continues over Austin and Dallas. From there, it cuts diagonally on its way to the northeast. After Cleveland crosses over Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse and the Adirondacks. Then northern Vermont, New Hampshire and Maine. And again, we just saw if you been watching ABC, it was in Dallas, had their totality a moment ago. Let's head out first to Matt Mackey, who's up in Scroon Lake. You can see the uh, sun already being eclipsed by the moon a little bit there. What's it like there? What's the, the mood and the crowd like, Matt? Hey, I got to tell you, John and Lydia, the anticipation is building. We have been here since it was dark and early here at Scroon Lake. We rolled in at about 345 before anyone had got here. And it's been amazing to watch slowly over the course of the day. More and more and more people show up and now it's packed, jam packed. You can't get a parking spot if you try here. I'm going to step out really quickly. I'd like to show you the crowd off behind my shoulder. Take a look at this. So many folks out here and no doubt you'll notice many of them start to put those solar eclipse glasses on. While we are not in totality just yet here at Scroon Lake, we are starting to see more and more of the sun get covered up by the moon as it continues to track across it. Really incredible. I have spoken to people who have traveled from as far as Maryland, New Jersey, Massachusetts, all the way to Scroon Lake to see this. And again, you see, we're not at totality yet. Here at Scroon Lake, we expect the maximum extent of this eclipse when all of the sun will be covered up at 326 p.m. Uh, the duration of our totality is going to be about a minute and 11 seconds, so it's a little bit less than what you'll see further towards the north uh, along the center path of that eclipse. But folks here are excited. The sky might be ever so slightly 
trying to dim. I'm going to throw on the eclipse glasses in just a bit once I go ahead and get off TV because it's really, really nice. Remember, if you're in Albany, you're going to need to wear these eclipse glasses from start to finish because you're not in totality. Only about 97% of the sun will be covered up. But up here at Scroon Lake and at points within totality, when the sun is completely covered, you're able to briefly take these off. And again, the anticipation really building for that moment. Too high clouds, but we can see the sun through it just fine at the moment. And there's a little patch of clear sky coming in behind it as well. Fingers crossed for that magic moment at 326. Let's get it back to you at the desk. All right, thank you so much, Matt. Now, one of the most popular places to be in the Adirondacks is Lake Placid, and the Northway was very busy today with people heading up. Oh, yeah, we were, we were worried it would turn to a parking lot at some point. James Delafuente live at the Mirror Lake Inn. A huge crowds expected. James, I'm so happy you made it there. I was nervous. You wouldn't get there, but you're there. Yes, John, Lydia, we, we made it pretty well, too. We left about 6 o'clock this morning, came up that north way. It was smooth sailing, not a car in the way, no slow delay at all. We just came in like smooth sailing, as I said, into Mirror Lake. So as you can see behind me, folks are gathering on the beach, and they're hanging out, and we're getting ready to enjoy all this stuff. And about 40 years ago, people can remember the miracle on ice. But, you know, astrologers are saying, this spectacle in the sky won't be seen again here for almost another 400 years. And now to share this moment with me, I've met some friends out here and I want to have you guys meet. I want you to meet Flora and David. And now I, we've all got these great little glasses on that we're using to see the solar eclipse with. But now I think you guys have some real creative things that you came up with. And I want you to explain to me, what did you come up with? So, so um, we came up with this idea because when you're wearing the glasses, see, it's fully functional. You can look up at the sun, you could see the sun see the eclipse but the glasses yes but the sun could get in see through right here oh yeah and you could become blind so <gasps> we <laughs> came up with this where like it's pushed in here so nothing can get in here and nothing can in get in here if david will show you how you wear it yeah david so, demonstrate that so why does it why does it make why is it so big the answer is because if if, if it's a little hole then your nose might, might not fit because you because you might not know what's the perfect size of your nose but your nose knows right <laughs> so now put these on show me how this is going to work what does it do so, again so these are the for the eyes mm -hmm. you have to measure them with the eclipse yep, part where right. you could actually see. Yep. I had called it the glass part. How do we come up with it? It's basically where my dad, he got it from my cousin's. Nice, nice, My nice. cousin's husband. Yep. And and Elijah. and my and cousin's the... husband, he got some. He got it somewhere from TikTok. <laughs> All right, now that was David and Flora, and they are really creative. They've got some other ways that they're checking out the eclipse down here. And if you haven't checked out all the ways that you could see the eclipse, go ahead and find out some of those tutorials that are out there. Again, this is just an amazing day. There's a lot of people having a lot of fun. And again, thank David and Flora because I love that creative mask that they've got. <laughs> so coming to you from Mirror Lake here, James De La Fuente, News 10, ABC. Thank you so much, James. And we also got a little genealogy lesson. Yeah, we should just give David a okay. show right now. Uh, we're also going to be hearing in this uh, next half hour from uh, uh, Richard Monda. He's assistant professor of uh, physics and astronomy over at uh, Hudson Valley Community College. Like any good professor, he is actually viewing the eclipse live somewhere in the Adirondacks. But he answered questions about what we're going to see and why. And we will bring those to you throughout our coverage this half hour. Uh, let's check back in with the uh, e Eclipse Tracker. Indianapolis, we're told, is where it's happening right now. And again, they've got a, a pretty good view of it right there. I don't know what the cloud cover is or if it uh, lifted off cap. I'd probably have a better read on that, but that's a pretty good shot of the Eclipse right now uh, in Indianapolis. And it's a really neat of what's happening, because don't forget the moon is uh, casting its uh, shadow on the Earth. And watch what happens on the uh, satellite loop. You can see some clouds in Indiana and Ohio and Illinois, and then poof, they're gone because it's blocking out the satellite from mm. seeing the clouds in Indiana and Illinois. Neat. Now, we know that lots more people are living in the path of totality for this year's solar eclipse. I want to say it's like 31.6 million compared to 12 million during the last eclipse that crossed the U.S. in 2017. 
Here is when we were going to see the totality in New York State because we were just looking at Indianapolis. Totality will hit New York at 317. It's going to take about a minute for it to reach Buffalo. Another two minutes to hit Rochester. Syracuse is going to see totality at 323 with Lake Placid and Scroon Lake at 325 and 326. So what causes the eclipse's path to be where it is this year versus 40 years from now? That's the first question we put to Professor Richard Monda. The path of a solar eclipse across the surface of the Earth is determined by where the moon's shadow goes. Now the moon's orbit is tilted at, relative to the Earth's orbit around the sun. And as a result, it depends on how it's tilted during that time when it blocks the sun. So sometimes the shadow of the moon across uh, the globe will be somewhat uh, horizontal around the same latitude, more or less, like it was in 2017. And uh, this year, it's more from the uh, south, southwestern part of the United States, from Texas up through New York and Vermont, more at an angle. So there you have it. It depends on where both things line up and how it hits the Earth. And that's why so often it's at the corners of the Earth and not right here, right in North America. Yeah, we're kind of lucky that it's going across this huge path across North America. Very populated cities this time are getting to see it. Although New York State, the best view is in the Adirondacks, and uh, that's where our Trishna Begum is. We're not going to hear from her this half hour because she's teaching her kids about science. Which that's right. We just saw those cute kids with James <laughs> up at Mirror Lake Inn in Lake Placid, um, and we heard from ABC News. This might be sparking the next generation sure. of scientists and people interested in STEM uh, at a young age. You never know what's going to trigger for a child where they go, they really fall in love with something, and this could absolutely do that. I think we, we're going to go to a story I, I shot the other day with a pilot who right now he's he's Might up have in the best view he's up in the air right now he's going to circle around Long Island until this it hit New York as you were saying which is coming up shortly uh, let's watch this story now Rosie the Riveter built these during World War II they had to build this plane ask pilot David Prescott a question about planes so wow. currently a lot of people say the pennies in there for good luck any so question about planes really this is like flying a dump truck and he could go on for days but it's this plane he's flying Monday that has everybody talking because David will get a perfect view of the eclipse from 8,000 feet up. Basically along the path, um, but that path from Syracuse up to Plattsburgh, um, I'll probably pick it up, you know, somewhere around uh, Ogdensburg or Canton, um, you know, over to Plattsburgh. How long will we be able to stay with it? I don't know. That's part of the scientific things that we're going to find out. The plane he's taking above the clouds eclipses your average Cessna. Has uh, full electronic maps, full autopilot, and collision avoidance so it allows you know the plane to do a little bit more work for me so that I can spend more time uh, looking at the eclipse. As for looking up, oh, I'll have the same glasses that people on the ground need to have um, and yes my plan is is to uh, have the plane on autopilot so that I can take a moment along with my passengers and and take a look. Um, we also plan on having some uh, GoPros mounted uh, you know around the airplane. If you were hoping to mount your backside in one of David's coveted seats on Monday <laughs> You got a better chance of walking on the moon, pal. That's a very long list of people that have already applied for those positions. <laughs>So again, he's up there right now. He took off from Albany. Uh, he was getting in place uh, a day ago, and he was going to be up there right now, and he'll be following it right up to where our crews are in uh, Mirror Lake, up around Lake Placid. So, you know, the interesting thing, he's going to have a great view from up in the sky up there, but he's not going to feel it like our crews on the ground are feeling no. it. And Trishna just texted me, Cap, that the temperature has already dropped in the Adirondacks. Yeah, I mean, we've noticed Albany's actually dropped three degrees since it started so it's you know it could drop as much as five six degrees at the time of uh, totality which again Matt Mackey's in Scroon Lake this is where the total eclipse will be south of that even though it's 99 percent it's not going to get nearly as dark as where it will be 100 uh, percent now let me show you um, let me just switch this this is the, uh, what the eclipse looks like, and uh, Richard Mondo was talking about this. The sun, there's the moon perfectly lined up. There's the shadow on the earth. And that shadow, if you're in the middle of it, now people say, well, why in certain spots does it last over three minutes, other places a minute, minute and a half? Well, if you're in the middle 
of the path of the eclipse, that's where it will be 3 minutes, 20 seconds, 3 minutes, 30 seconds. If you're on the edge of it, less than 2 minutes, or maybe in the case where Matt Mackey is just over uh, 1 minute. So the position where you're located in the shadow makes a big difference on the duration of the shadow. So again, southern edge it could be just a minute, maybe even seconds. If you're right in the middle, 3 minutes and 22, 23 seconds as it crosses uh, north of Albany up towards uh, Lake Champlain. So that's what's going on today. If you're in the middle of it, the eclipse will last longest. Interesting. Guys. Hmm. Well, Cap, right now in the middle of it is Cleveland. So let's take a look at the path here to totality. It's about 115 miles and encompasses several major cities in the U.S. We already saw it in Dallas and Indianapolis. Now it's in Cleveland. Next, heading to a major city-wise, Buffalo, and after that, Montreal. They're saying that this might be the most viewed astronomical event in history. This is pretty incredible. What's interesting, too, this is a little bit of serendipity, but Casey Kantz, who's not mm -hmm. here today, He's a huge Cleveland Guardians baseball fan. He took the day off months ago to go to their home opener today. That game had to get pushed back because, as you saw, that it's Cleveland right now. Mm -hmm. They would have been in that game right now, but that's the yeah, who would have been looking at the. They field? would have had to put the lights on, I guess. And yeah, you're right. Nobody be watching the ball. Uh, you'd be get a whole, inside the park home run on a walk. Uh, but Casey's <laughs> there, so uh, he's experiencing this as well. And Trish, as you said, is up north, so we're we're kind of everywhere. And some of it was planned, some of it wasn't. That, that's small bunny for you, right? Yes. There's connections to everywhere for this total solar eclipse all across the U.S. So that is Cleveland right now. Again, it is heading to Buffalo next. And once it hits Buffalo, Western New York State, we're going to start hearing from crews uh, that we have. Again, uh, our Rob Lindenmuth mm -hmm. is in Rochester, so yep. he'll be calling in and we'll be hearing from him as it goes from Buffalo across to Rochester. And then we will pop back up to the Adirondacks. Mm -hmm. So people in the totality zone in the Adirondacks will see total darkness around the sun. But if you look, look closely, Professor Richard Monda says you'll see much more. This is the diamond ring that happens the moment before totality begins and the moment that totality ends. A burst of sunlight shines through one of the craters of the moon and we see this bright area around the darkened moon there. And it's called the diamond ring effect. Bailey's beads are caused by sunlight shining around the edge of the moon through its craters. And so there are breaks in the crescent of the sun that's showing, you see a string of bright spots of sunlight that look like beads strung around the uh, dark moon there. Now, you're looking right now at the ball field, uh, progressive wow. field, where Casey is probably in his seat, knowing him going early to, for a little uh, a tailgating with his dad or whatever to get, get in your seats early there, because it, it's going to be a lot of traffic issues in Cleveland, just like in the Adirondacks, because people wanted to get in and out. So I'm sure Casey's there. That's the view from his seat right now. It's like you're sitting there at 4 in the morning. Uh, you're right. They, the lights are on for this uh, soon-to-be game when they can get to turn the lights off after the total solar eclipse is gone through Cleveland. Wow, this is... You know, they were talking about uh, on ABC News earlier in, during their coverage that people won't just physically see this. They will emotionally feel it. Yeah. And I can't believe how excited I'm getting. I was not that excited yesterday, and today, wow. Yeah, you, you realize it's, 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 it's not something you see every other year. It is very rare, especially here. And, uh, and again, you saw people on ABC get huge marriages happening, mm -hmm. a lot of proposals happening, people wanting to uh, honor that. Rob Lindenmuth is in Rochester right now. Let's uh, check in with him. I believe he's on the phone telling us uh, what he's seeing there. Rob, can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Hopefully uh, you guys can hear me back in Albany. We're just outside of uh, Rochester, just south of Rochester in Henrietta right now. And i got to tell you, in the last three minutes, despite the cloud cover here, it's like the middle of the night right now. All the street lights are on. There's a few groups of people out here. I mean, it, it's, it, this, is, this is surreal. I mean, of, of course, it's not like being able to see it without the clouds. Um, this is just incredible. Uh, the 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 birds that were chirping about 15 minutes ago. It's it's quiet here. Everything is just kind of quiet, and we're all just kind of taking it in. Now it is pitch black, 
here, and it continues to get darker as well. This is this is very, really, really, honestly incredible. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before. Very neat, Rob. I wish we had gotten you some uh, some clear skies here, so you would have experienced it a, a little differently. But just just the fact that it goes from day to night's got to be uh, a little surreal. Yeah, John, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, obviously, I'm mean, I'm looking towards the north and west right now, where it's still a little bit clear on the horizon, but overhead it is it is it is pitch black right now. I've this is this is just ah. Uh, I, I, honestly, I mean, this is just awe-inspiring. Okay, Rob, we will let you get back to viewing it in person. And Rob mentioned about the birds going quiet. Yeah. And we're we were talking about the effect. Here's the view in Tupper Lake right now, just north of us in the Adirondacks. And my goodness, um, I'm assuming, yeah, all the birds around Tupper Lake right now are quiet and roosting in their trees. You know, the further north you go to these places, it's not like you're near a city where all these lights kick on. You, the further north you go towards the up the Adirondacks, uh, there's not a lot of lights to begin with, uh, as you know, if you've ever driven there at night. So it, it, it gets, I, I feel like, extra dark because you don't have just the... Uh, the regular lights kicking on as, as Rob seeing them happen around Rochester and again Tupper Lake it's it's almost there getting that slight ring on it and uh, cap might know cap is Tupper Lake going to get a, a full effect here yeah Tupper Lake will be uh, in totality so they're kind of in the meat of it as well most of the Adirondack Park except for the southern extent um, and don't forget we have a filter on this camera so right. it's, it's not quite that dark but uh, that gives you an idea of, of what it's looking like. It's probably at about 94%. Um, Albany will be at 96.6% in about five minutes. I, I know Kevin Appleby just ran outside to take a peek. He said it's getting a little bit dimmer. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's a big difference between totality and 96%. That's why everybody wanted to go north. Uh, great viewing Adirondacks up around Lake Champlain. Um, I don't know if they can punch up the uh, saddle. Look at the look at the folks there. How dark that it is. That is Buffalo right now. Wow. Cap, and I think this is. Uh, let's see with our producer David Rush. This is Niagara Falls. You said Niagara Falls. My goodness, look how dark that is at 3:22 on an April afternoon. And to your point, Lydia, you were saying earlier you weren't fully excited till today. I, I texted my son this morning. He's a student at U Buffalo, a sophomore there, and he said none, none of us were really crazy. But and then hit today hit more like. Everybody yeah. can't just, we're, go, we're all going to go outside. We're going to find a place. And I'm like, make sure you have the right glasses on, please. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. Traffic was all jammed around Niagara Falls hours ago. You can see how dark it is. Oh, this is just a, an, an incredible experience. Again, everybody's getting to do this as a community. We're, we're experiencing this in chunks. Oh, it's getting lighter already. Look at yeah. that. Um, so then that means you, we can tell how quickly this eclipse is moving. Uh, it's going to take just one hour, 40 minutes for the moon's shadow to race more than 4,000 miles all across the continent. So we were wondering whether our pilot was going to be able to chase yeah. in his Cessna. <laughs> and no, John. No, right. he's, he's, he's about 140 miles an hour. So he's going to, the, the, the sun's got him beat and the moon's got to beat Yeah, today. there's no way he's going to be able to keep up it. <laughs> with it in a plane. Rochester was uh, uh, started at 320. Now we're closing in on Old Forge at 323. Lake Placid will be total at 325. So it's 32346 right now. So Lake Placid should be in this Tupper Lake, Almost very clean. close to Lake Placid. You can just see a little sliver. And and that is that is it. So it's just about total there and I'm sure Matt Mackey at Scroon Lake is he's very close to a total eclipse as well. I'm not sure if we have Matt Mackey. That would be great to go back to uh, Scroon Lake and take a look. Look at it just about. If you just hold your breath cap, it's going to be up, there he up. is. There's Matt and he's ready to go. And I'm closing in for sure. I, I hope you guys will excuse me for having the solar eclipse glasses on. It's super cool. Totally understood. It's kind of weird, that. right? Yeah. Uh, we have just the tiniest crescent of sunshine off there. Um, uh, we were talking to some astronomers on the shows over uh, the course of last darker. week, and they said it'd be like a like a crescent moon, but with the sun. Yeah. 
it's like a dimmer cool it's like a dimmer can. switch going it's, down on you right now Mac. yeah you it's can incredible. see it you can see it right now mac it's getting uh, darker it really around is. you um are you feeling cooler did you feel the temperature we're so drop? close and i'm gonna a hundred percent feeling cooler the winds eased up briefly for a moment there um we've definitely gone from around 60 i was watching the temperature on the mobile storm tracker uh, now we're looking at you know significantly cooler look at that light wow. well sure. you you've pretty much and lost again, your your light now matt breeze, it has Ma a chill to it matt can you look up for us and give us an yeah, idea is it, is they're it? telling me to send back to you guys but it's oh wow yeah, it's the tiniest he is in it matt just got into totality wow, wow this He's is like Pla now we want to look at lake placid Oh my goodness! So, how far is he from Placid? Are there? I mean, as the crow flies, they're, they're a little, a little ways, but not really. Yeah, a really. little ways, but about the same time for Total. Gotcha. Because they're okay. close to the same uh, uh, longitude. And, yep, it's getting darker there now. Lake Placid. They were having huge viewing parties, both near the speed skating oval, near the Olympic ski jump, over at Mount Hovenberg. Lake Placid, I think, was the hottest place to be for both yes. free viewing parties and then, of course, some of the places had some really ritzy viewing parties. Oh. Our James De La Fuente is there right now. and Scrolling James, his phone. There he is. He hears us. Oh, my us. goodness. Uh, we had to turn the camera light on to see you, James. Back now, and people here were just going crazy moments ago when totality took over. So I mean, this is just one special event that I mean, it's it's amazing to be here in a complete 100% totality. Again, the effects are coming out right now. It's gorgeous. If you can see this, enjoy it if you can. Wow, we're going to go back to Matt Mackey in Tupper Lake, and I see the shadow, the hey. outline of Matt standing there because it's still dark. <laughs> Yeah, Matt, we can't really see you at all. It's obviously in its totality right now. Yeah. Hey, Dave, we got a light. They can't see us. We're in totality. No, keep the light um, off. Yeah, again. No, it's okay. They really want tonight. Oh, they want the light off. They want the light <laughs> off. I'm so sorry about because that. Because I think it's, what's going to happen, it's crazy. Matt. I have a little time lapse pointed off in that direction. Oh. Yeah, it's going to get go ahead, light Jeff, there ahead. pretty quick. Oh. I'm just looking. A lot of oohs and ahs there, Matt, when, yeah. it, when it happened. I got the eclipse glasses ready to put back on. So Matt, a hundred percent. There's folks playing music in the background. There's actually a guy shooting a music video <laughs> over on the dock. He he traveled here specifically for this so he could film it during the eclipse. Oh, We're that's starting to see neat. maybe the slightest bit of light reemerge out there. But yeah, the 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 crowd went crazy, guys. There were woos, there were ahs. Everyone collectively took off their glasses at the same time. It's coming back, so we got to throw them back on. But okay, what an experience. Yeah, throw them back they're probably on. still dealing with a little safe. bit of it at Placid, but they're clapping. Can you hear them? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Now, that's Matt, it, guys. That's the eclipse. Matt, <laughs> in Arkansas, we heard they had a foghorn that sounded at the start of totality and the end of totality, so you knew when it was safe to take off the glasses. Get the glasses on and off, yeah. Um, did you have anything like that there, or you were just all looking at each other? No, we were going by the sense of when it started getting brighter. When you're looking through the glasses and you go into the totality, it, it gets dark. You can't see any of that corona shining through because it's not intense enough to make it through the filters. Um, we just kind of eyeballed it coming back. But you can tell when that light starts coming back through, you know when it's time to put them back on. Look how quick totality I was at Spoon Lake. Mac, you went from complete darkness back. now. It's coming back. It's coming back. Yep, same thing at Lake Placid. And that's Lake totality Placid right is, now. Uh, Lasted three minutes and 22 seconds at Lake Placid, one of the longest uh, durations in uh, the Adirondacks. It shows you how fast it's moving, though, because we're also monitoring the other network uh, feeds, and you know it's over. It was Burlington, now it's heading up for for Maine. Yeah, uh, it, it goes fast. Yeah, it's crossing into uh, Vermont, uh, northern Vermont, and northern New Hampshire right now. Totality is uh, is crossing into northern New England. Now, we are so lucky that this total solar eclipse went not over much of the U.S., but our area right here. The next one in 2044, totality will only be visible from North Dakota and Montana. Right. And, and, wow. you, and since people booked, we, we had one woman say they booked hotels seven years out. Yes. Uh, okay, so that's what, about 20 years from now? August 23rd is when it happens. You might want to book the hotel, call the Marriott now oh, in my Montana. Oh, the 24th. And get, oh, there what you go. way to celebrate? Because we <laughs> saw people getting married today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's check in back one more time with Lake Placid before our special ends. And it's starting to get lighter already. Again, Cap, you're right, so quick.
Well, well it's that's, like, that's, it's that's like watching th an accelerated uh, sunrise. Well, that you know, you think about you know Buffalo at uh, 318, and then crossing Lake Champlain at 325. So basically, it was only seven minutes to get across New York State. That's moving that eclipse. Well, wow. and when we came on the air at three, it was it was like. Uh, peak in, in Dallas, but yep. they're, they're probably back. It's like it's probably like noontime in Dallas again, you know, yeah. back to back to normal and the the temperature will go up. Uh, the birds will be back <laughs> to feeling normal again. They'll probably and, be a little tired. They're going to say, wow, that was the worst night of sleep I've ever had. <laughs> it's only seven minutes, right? It was so short, <laughs> but uh, we were lucky with the weather. There's no doubt about it. Eastern New York uh, up to the north of us. Uh, we were very, very fortunate here. Western New York. It was still dramatic. But they didn't have that uh, that sunshine like we had for okay. the eclipse. Since it always we have cl uh, clouds yes. coming into the capital region for anything, <laughs> high fives that we had Finally. incredible total solar Finally. eclipse coverage here on News 10 ABC. Yep. We're gonna we're not gonna leave you hanging. We're gonna send it back to ABC Network. They're, they've got more coverage because again it's going towards Vermont and Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna have you experience it there. So we appreciate you watching us here for our local coverage and uh, boy, we'll it was see fun. See you back here at four. We'll yeah. see you here in less than an hour. You've been watching News 10 ABC's Solar Eclipse coverage, sponsored by Kings Isle Adult Living. any other way. So there's a lot of science happening right now. You have Here been watching ABC News special coverage of the solar eclipse as it moves across the country. But as that eclipse moves closer to us here in New York, we wanted to focus more on the event as it heads right towards the capital region. News 10 ABC's solar eclipse coverage starts right now. News 10 ABC's solar eclipse coverage is sponsored by Kings Isle Adult Living.